Hello everyone. Today we will see how we have used NLKT and uh, Pandas and other text related packages to perform the text analysis on the book uh, that uh, that we are planning to use for today's analysis. And this book has written by an author and it has multiple stories in it. We would try to identify uh, the content starting from the story here because before this it is all about the author and everybody else. Uh, we would start from here and we will try to find the um, the end of this book and then perform our analysis on it so <clears throat> we have loaded the book uh, which is available in the text format from the gutenberg website and we stored all our data in the raw and then you can see we have printed some of the uh, initial 400 characters of this file and the one thing that i want you to note here is slash r slash n which is pretty much uh, slash r indicates the return key that we are placing and slash n indicates it's the new line character uh, we need our objective is to convert this into a data frame and the challenge is to uh, split it on these variables which is not uh, exactly following the same pattern but let's see how we have done it so this is where we are actually trying to find the exact word where the story starts and the end the reverse find and then uh, streaming out uh, trimming up our data to the data points where we can actually make our analysis so here we have done raw replace uh, like on the main data set we have done a replace so so that we just end up having only one uh, uh, space uh, delimiter so that we can split our data set correctly and then we split it by slash n and store it into the past data uh, this actually gave us good result and we were able to get full data set uh, completely data, data set as part of the full corpus here the only thing that was uh, missing because of the uh, not a not a right pattern with the slash r slash n and missing uh, written key and the new line characters we had some blank lines in our uh, split data set so we used this to read only the data that that has no blank line so after doing all this, we were able to come up with the total number of rows in our data set that we got is 7107, which is not exactly equal to the number of uh, row if I see in the text file uh, that says 9 to 10. But also given we have not used the, con uh, the content starting from the line 1, we, we went down um, and found the exact location from where this story starts. So given those things that's possibly that's why the numbers are not exactly matching and it may not match because there are some other terms that may be changing the total content total uh, numbers okay so here uh, to start the process we would actually uh, perform three steps in the beginning we would remove the punctuations we would tokenize and we would remove the stop word so to actually illustrate the process, we have done this in the data frame and tried to represent the data very clearly so that we can see the difference. Um, string punctuation is the, uh, this is the package that these are the punctuations that store in it. So we just performed a very simple operation where we are actually removing all the punctuations for each column values and then for each row value. And then you can pretty much see here like, uh, like this word you have open and close bracket with the star and this is the actual value with no bracket and no star in it uh, so all those punctuations are actually gone here if you see in this novel we have a minus minus or here you don't have anything similarly here so all those uh, all those characters are removed as part of this process so we have removed the punctuations now we are going to do the tokenizing tokenizing is actually converting these words into into a into each word list uh, so that we can perform further analysis on these uh, this content or the, the actual content of the book so here you can see we have uh, used very simple uh, split on w so this actually is doing the regex split which is capital w plus means we need to find out the anything which is not a word split on it so it's pretty much doing the same thing so capital w is like a negation of a word and if it's a small w it means something that's a word plus that can be anything number and uh, later in combination 
but yes, that's the word. But the capital W, it's not a word, and we need to find so that plus indicates if you have a, like a long spacing characters, then you can with this caps plus sign be able to split on that. So you can pretty much see here the data from here to here. It looks very clearly that we were able to achieve the required uh, expected output here. Everything is split. It. Now the challenge is um, that some some characters are in capital letters, some characters are in small letter, and Python does not Python does take the take things differently if it's in different case. So to make things easier, we should actually convert this into a smaller case and then try working on it further. So we will do it in the next uh, couple of steps. So here I'm doing the uh, same uh, steps here. You see, I've just converted this into a lower case so that I can make my other processing steps go easily. So everything is converted into a lower case and you can see the change from this step to this step. So this was caps, this is all in small letter and everything else follows as it is. <clears throat> and I have also tried using the NLKT word tokenizer just to see if there is any difference. So you can see uh, we did not note any uh, bigger difference. So it's up to us if we want to write our own function or we want to use the standard uh, something that is given by the NLKT. Both can serve the top words. Now we are going to remove this top words. Um, we are using the top words English here and we also uh, added few words because we thought these words were not making much sense in our story as per after we did the analysis. So we added these words to, to, to drop them from the analysis so that we can actually get some real terms which are making more sense for us. So we added these extra words to the stop words and we are now performing our uh, analysis after removing those, those words. You can see some of the stop words listed here. So anything like you can see the is a stop word and we have we don't have it here. So similarly off is a stop word. We don't have it here. One and one is a good word. It's not a we are not treating it as a stop word and it's, it's available here. So everything that's a stop word is not in this this column. So you can see a journey starting from this is the actual data set. This is the uh, clean data set and then this is the tokenized data. And then this is our actually something that's removed from the stop word. So we can see the transition and the output very clearly. Now we are going to the, do the stemming of the text. Stemming of the text is actually a process where you uh, get the text into its normal form. Uh, some this is a very crude way of uh, not, I don't I should not say crude way, but it is it is not an accurate way of getting the uh, right data for some of the cases, but it works very well with uh, where we need to be worrying about the speed and everything. So the, the speed is fast, the algorithm works very well, uh, but there is some nuances that, that I'll possibly talk about as we move down. So here we are doing the stemming of the data set and the words actually get stemmed down to its original form. That's what the algorithm is supposed to do. So as you can see, like running is getting converted into run and run is also gets converted into run. So if anybody says I'm running and if somebody says I run and end of the day will only store I run I, and I'm not going to store I, I I'm running or I running or whatever I'm, I'm just going to store one word so we are actually reducing down the number of terms that we have to store into my final data set or my training data set to, to build my model further ahead. So that's how this, we are doing the same step here. We, I'm passing my tokenized. So this is the function stemming that we wrote. We are passing our uh, word and we are doing this stem here and then we are able to store that information. And you can see this is my stemmed data set. So like unparalleled is written as unparalleled. Adventurous is converted into adventure. Uh, hands is hand. Uh, so similarly, like it's some some of the words does make sense. Some of the words, I'll show you an example where they don't match, like meanness and meanings. They they both have a very different meaning. But if you do a stem, they both will turn out to be mean. And that's where that's where the um, accuracy and the speed uh, come together. What exactly matters? Does the uh, what really we need to achieve in as part of our analysis? That's where we need to make that decision what we want to do with it we want to do with stemming or we want to take another set of example that's treated as uh, limitizing 
Solemnizing is actually a more of a dictionary form of the word, and it actually treats your corpus as the first dictionary stand. So that if you're looking, if there is any new word, if there is a runner and the run, they both have a different meaning. In terms of, uh, you can see in the stemming example too. So, uh, but if when we do a stemming, if I'm finding putting a word and I'm not able to find that word in the corpus, then lemmatizer will keep that word as it is. So it's not going to change its form. It's not going to change anything. It will keep the word as it is until unless it finds something or something similar or something other words in the um, corpus. So that's the and it also retains the value like meaning and meanness, even though they have a different meaning. So it will keep the, the actual form of those words. So you can see the difference here I'm trying to show here. The meanness and the meaning, they both are in the stemming. They both go to mean. Uh, and same way is <clears throat> children and child, which is going good here. We can see this is treated as child and children. And, um, and you can see the mangoes goes to mango. So this is a good, but the, so the only few places where it uh, is not working well. But if you uh, see with the case with the lemmatizer, uh, if it's meaning and meanness, you are able to see the meanness and meaning exactly the same word. We didn't, it didn't convert it into a mean because they have, it's, it's not gonna find it into the uh, another lower low version or another dictionary meaning of it because they have a completely different dictionary meaning. So that's, that's the advantage with the limitizer where we actually keep the accuracy of the text and, but it is more time consuming and resource constraint. So that's where the uh, actual trade-off comes. Just to showcase, we have done the limitizing of our data set and you can see the difference here, unparalleled. So from unparalleled, which was my tokenized data set, I, it became unparalleled when we stemmed it, but it became unparalleled when we actually limitized it. So, so you can see the difference uh, because even though the unparalleled is not, is not a direct dictionary word, it is a second form of the word, but because there is no other terms which is matching with that and limitizer keeps the word as it is. Moving ahead, we have uh, written now all those steps that we have done, we have put in, in one single function so that we can perform our final an analysis. And we actually uh, wrote this clean text function and now we are going to pass that function and perform our analysis. So here I'm actually passing my this method to perform uh, the analysis. And by, by using the scikit-learn feature extraction um, counter vectorizer. So we initialize this uh, by passing our method so that my data is get uh, processed through this uh, function, whatever we showed in the Panda and the above slides, and then everything is stored here. So I can actually see um, full information in, in this form here. And the, this will store the uh, actual vector and this will store the actual counts and the frequency and we'll, we'll try to display that information in below. So <clears throat> to answer the first question, how many total unique words are in this corpus? So after we remove the stop words and the punctuations, so there are total um, 65, 32 unique words in this corpus. So this actually, uh, so if you remember, we had like 7,000 plus words in the beginning and now we have like 6, 65, 32. Uh, unique words. So after stemming and limitizing, uh, even though we are not doing limitizing in our uh, final function here, which is which is we are passing to the uh, to the uh, count vectorizer method. But yes, um, but stemming does play uh, is is all is reducing the total number of words from seven thousand plus to sixty five hundred. Now. So building the document term matrix, uh, now we, we are actually going to convert this into an array so that we can actually see the data. And you can see here, we have uh, converted everything into, into terms and the numbers. So this, this indicates here the row number from our uh, content, and this indicates the actual term. Because these terms are numbers, we need to convert them into their respective values. So we can, uh, there is, we are gonna change the, um, change the description by passing this, uh, change the column name. We are going to change the column name and you can see the actual value here. So this is like a matrix where we are saying the 10th, 11th and these terms are appearing um, 
at what location and at what uh, what is the frequency of them we seeing we are seeing zero here because these terms are not appearing in one two and third uh, row of the data set that we have <clears throat> Now uh, we are going to actually display the top uh, 200 words. So here uh, I'm just putting up the data as it is. Um, we have the data frame created uh, with the terms and count. The term is the total words uh, and the count is the frequency of the word. And then we can see here all this information can be sorted to see which index and what term and what count they have. So this actually gives us also um, the term one, which is of the count 264 with the relative frequency, which is of 0 0.069. And we actually uh, tried to answer one of the questions where we had to calculate the relative frequency. And uh, our understanding of the relative frequency is we actually get the total count and then calculate, <clears throat> divide each count by the total count. So we get the relative frequency of each frequent items. And at last, we thought of uh, representing uh, all our uh, top uh, 200 words, I think. Um, no, we, we just uh, represented all the words, whatever we had in our corpus. And we were, we were able to see it very clearly. This matches best matches with our uh, the uh, top words that we see here. One time, found, say, and even. If I go down, I can very much uh, find all this found, one time, uh, even, and all those terms. So, uh, we, this is like a frequency. Uh, we we are we used word clouds um, generate from frequencies where we pass the data set with the terms and the frequencies, and we were able to plot this graph. So we can see the same data set and now the, the assignment is to identify the 200 most frequent word and create a graph to show that. So we actually um, sorted our data set and then uh, we, we thought of presenting it in, in this way. So we see that now, later one is uh, pretty much very highly used uh, throughout the book and then followed by time and found and stay even. Uh, there are few interesting terms like later I and uh, later balloon, made, little, mean. So if you see like some little and all those terms, some, some of the terms may not actually give us the exact word or matching to matching words in, in our real book because they have been stemmed down to something more not that meaningful as, as it is in the book. But we would be able to... Um, find them the related in, related uh, keywords or related words in the actual book. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about that very briefly. So here, this is very interesting plot that we uh, we are trying to show the the actual occurrence of the words in the book and, and different locations uh, of where it is available. So you can very much see the one is mostly available uh, like very high in frequency and pretty much on every pages or mostly just few places where it's missing. Uh, similarly, the eyes is used quite often, most of the places and the balloon is there in the beginning of the book and then there is nothing. And then again, maybe at the end of the book, murder is again here. So I can relate back to this, uh, to the book because if we go back and see that we have, um, we have a story on murder, which is, I think it's in the somewhere center, and then there is a mystery. So if I have to relate back to this, it's actually following this this uh, points where there is a story about murder and, and the mystery. I think these are the stories that are talking or using these, these terms more frequently in here. And similarly, if you see, there is something called balloon hawks and the gold bug. And uh, I think these these balloon hawks is, is actually coming after the murder. And that's where you see the pretty much more terms balloon used here. <clears throat> and uh, the gold bug and the beast in one, they're actually having some sort of balloon uh, terms mentioned, uh, related terms mentioned here in the, big, in the other story. So I, I can actually relate back like which term and what possibly the story type could be uh, <clears throat> that, that's being talked in the, in the book. And uh, 
think that's that's what the text analysis actually gives us more in detail if you deep, uh, dive into this analysis more by performing bigrams and everything else and we might be able to get exact terms that's used more often and explain more about the data set <clears throat> So then this is the actually uh, plot just to show how the data set is actually uh, distributed. We have more than 50% uh, of the data set is actually less than 0 0 0.005. And there are more outliers, but those can be seen uh, very easily from our top 200 graphs as well. Then our objective was to find out the um, how many words that represents the half of the total counts or the frequencies. So we were able to achieve, so we calculated the total number of words that we have, and then we did the half of it. And then we wanted to achieve how soon we are able to meet this, this number in terms of our count frequency. So we wrote a function which actually counts back to the total number of words. And then uh, we just displaying the last uh, 480 to 484 rows where we are actually going to cross the uh, terms uh, count by so so we are actually doing like count back backing we are counting it backwards so uh, 1819 and then 1839 and then 181957 so it's every time it's at this plus this is equal to this this plus this is equal to this so 18957 and the our objective was to cross 18924 and we we were able to achieve that number in 483 Term. So this means that out of 6,500 terms that we have in this corpus, uh, in 483 terms, we were able to cross more than the 50 uh, frequent frequency or uh, the count of the word. So rest, I can say 6,000 words are actually used or are present in, in just 50% of the remaining counts. Now, uh, we need to uh, identify if this uh, analogy or this frequency of uh, the terms is actually following Jeff's law. So we did uh, identify um, how Jeff's law works. I'll take you to the Excel file where we actually put in everything in, in one Excel. So this is the terms and this is the uh, frequency and we created a rank here. So what we have done in our code is we actually tried to divide this number by 264 divide this number by 264 so divide each number by 264 so that we can identify the relative uh, frequency of uh, each term and then check which and and to, to, to check it against we use frequency and the rank and then the multiplication here so uh, ideally speaking as per Jeff's law our the combination or the multiplication of frequency and the rank should fall within the range pretty much close to what we already have this 264. So let's say my range is uh, uh, 200 to 300 or maybe 350. So every every calculation that I'm doing here should fall like 264 into one, it should fall. This is fine. 159 into two, it should, it's coming 318 pretty much close. But this into 155 is 465, which is not not that close to the range that we are trying to achieve. So uh, and the same um, pattern follows throughout the uh, the frequency. So we do conclude that our uh, frequency terms are not following the Jeff's uh, frequency analysis. But uh, what we do see is uh, that, that the frequency is obviously the indirect, uh, directly, pro sorry, frequency is inversely proportional to the rank. And this is the way how Jeff's law was calculated. So uh, even when we tried to take log and plot the output, we were not able to uh, convince ourselves that it is following the Jeff's law. So, so this is the, uh, graph and you can very much see that the blue lines is where the Jeff's law of, of the line going with the, with the frequency and the red is where we are actually with our actual relative frequencies for plotting this graph. But if you uh, put a log to it, they, they go, they're going in completely different direction apart from very few initial data points. They're actually moving away from each other. We don't know if this is the right representation of log log plot, but uh, 
theoretically or even with the uh, the data set that we saw we when we we do say that it's it's not following the jets law this is the uh, bit complete data set and then we wanted to conclude uh, why do you think that the frequency of the words in the corpus differs from the all words so it's because as as we said earlier there are like 7000 plus words but we have performed so much text operation on this we have performed remove the stop words we have performed the stemming on this we have performed the limitization on on the initial part of the text so these these uh, different methods actually remove out the words which are more frequent and maybe not adding much value in the text analysis and i think these are the words are also reduced or having reduced meaning so these words actually, uh, after removing the punctuations and stop words and and stemming out the words, what ends up is actually a real crisp of the the data that's in the corpus or the terms that is in the corpus. So that's why the actual total number of words in the corpus will not be equal to the the, the uh, terms that we have collected at the end of these text processing. Thank you.